I want to be careful that I'm not sort of like making you guys feel as if this is some fancy technique that you can just apply and get results. It is a living realization that has to be born from your heart. If you know that you are, if you know that the I am consciousness itself is what you are, you're in the 0.0001% of this planet that has the luxury of knowing that. It is the most holy and completely satisfying feeling you can ever have. It's what the soul has always craved. It's what the ego thinks it was craving all along, yeah? In searching for pleasure in the world and over and over again, sex, drugs, rock and roll, and it can't get fulfilled, it can't get fulfilled. Well, damn it, what is it I really want? Next question is from Lindsay. I believe that you mentioned we don't want to remain in neutral state once we realize the I am, meaning that we need to apply our I am responsibility with great powers comes great responsibility. I completely follow you. However, I have been letting go of a lot of situations in my life, simply observing, observing as I do know that I am the creator and that I am being lived. All of the all of us are perfect and do not lack anything. This seems like there are two separate concepts or paths on the table at this point. Would you please be clear? Would you please clear this up for me? Yeah, I had a, I had this conversation with somebody on, I want to say Instagram this week. So yeah, this is the kind of like paradox of stepping into the I am state, becoming the creator is that you have to also understand how that, how that complements non-doership because it does complement it. But again, here's what non-doership means. Non-doership means that the person, the character, the conditioned unit called Aaron Abke, that person cannot do anything. It is being lived by life. It is a product of life. It's a product of its conditioning, of its patterns and all of that. So it can only ever behave as it's been programmed to behave. It's stuck forever within the limited confines of that person, that conditioned unit. So the person is not the doer. The person is being lived. The person is no different than the clouds passing in the sky. The cloud isn't doing itself. The cloud's a product of nature, right? The cloud's a product of earth and what earth is doing. And that's like what the person is. So the person's not the doer. But when we're stepping into the I am, we're not saying I, the person, am the creator. We're saying I, I, the I am itself, <laughs> I consciousness, I awareness, I existence am the creator. And the person is something that I'm creating. The person is my creation. So that means the person can't be the creator, right? Uh, a painter is greater than his painting. A musician is greater than her music that she's playing, right? It's her creation. And so the person is your creation. So that's the way that non-doership and creator consciousness complement one another. So you said, I'm observing. Fantastic. That's creator consciousness. Because again, creator consciousness is not really a doing in that we, we have to go out into our world and manufacture the outcomes we want to create. Creator consciousness is choosing where we place our attention because we are attention, we are consciousness, and whatever you give your I am to, you enliven with all the power of the creator. And it has to come into manifestation in some form. And so you're always wielding the I am, whether you know it or not, you don't need to even say I am. I am is even closer to you than the words I am. I am is your very sense of awareness itself and where you place it. And so even to feel within yourself, um, I'm sick today or something like that. If you give attention to that thought without correcting it, then you're inviting more sickness into your experience because it has to manifest. Whatever the I am touches has to manifest in due time. Sometimes it manifests very quickly. Other times it may take months or years to manifest, but you can be sure if you give it your I am power, it will manifest in some form. And the more you believe in it, the more powerfully it will manifest, <clears throat> the more diligent and consistent you are at keeping your attention on it, 
the faster it will manifest. So as you practice creator consciousness and, you know, building your consciousness through I am, you're, you're choosing each day. How do I want to build my consciousness today? Much like what we just did with Francesco, right? He decided to deconstruct the way he had built his consciousness prior to this moment, belief in unworthiness, belief that love must be earned. And we went into that belief. We looked at it with our I am attention and we said, I'm going to deconstruct that. I'm going to revoke my belief in that. I don't believe that anymore. Thank you. You served me. You, you got me to this point, And now I no longer need your service. I'm ready to transcend that belief and create worthiness to create the knowledge that love is already freely given. It can't be earned and I don't need to earn it. So Francesco now has to keep his attention on that. If he just diverts back to the old patterning, he may keep building that again. He may rebuild that, that belief and keep constructing it. So this is why creator consciousness requires diligence from us. <clears throat> Faithfulness to the task, right? I think we said this last week. Um, sincerity and intention are far more important than technique and method. So like, it isn't enough to just go through the motions in your mind of, okay, Aaron says to revoke belief in the old thing and affirm what I want to believe. So I revoked that and I affirm this, did it. Were you really there though? Were you really giving your heart to that just now? Was that sincere? Was there a deep intentionality behind it? Not really, right? It's just kind of you going through the motions, hoping that a technique works. That's not creator consciousness. Creator consciousness is to know that I am in full charge of my state of being based on what I allow, based on what I'm willing to tolerate and what I'm not willing to tolerate. And what you're willing to tolerate, you are inviting into your experience, right? So are you willing to keep tolerating the belief that love has to be earned? Because if you're not, you may have to deny your belief in that many, many times as it keeps coming up. Because guess what? If you've given a bunch of energy to an old belief for years, it's going to have a lot of charge in it. So it's going to have to most likely, not always, but most likely it's going to have to be released gradually over time. You may do a MDMA ceremony or an ayahuasca ceremony and have this profound moment of insight where in just a flash, all that energy is revoked. Maybe you even purge, right? And you throw it up and you get it out of the body. And then you notice it just never arises for you again. That's also possible. But that's much more the exception rather than the rule. Most healing takes place gradually as we choose to be the creator again and again and again. When that belief arises, will you feel like a victim to it? Oh man, I thought I healed this already. And here I am feeling rejected again. Oh, what am I ever going to You see how you're creating that with those thoughts? Very subtle, but aren't you giving attention and belief in that idea of rejection? If you're complaining about it, if it bums you out that it appeared again, <clears throat> you still don't know you're the creator. When you do that, you still don't realize you are wielding the power of I am. When you really get this, and I've said this on many of our previous calls, right? When you get this, you will know it because a profound shift will take place in you that everything that appears is just a decision. Do I want this? Do I want to continue allowing this in my experience or am I done with it? And neither is right or wrong. You can play out rejection as long as you want, but at a certain point, you are going to get tired of it because your soul is perfect. Your soul is divine. Your soul is one with God who's perfect love. So you'll never be able to be satisfied living as a victim, living as feeling rejected, feeling unworthy of love, feeling like you have to earn love. These beliefs are inherently wearying to the soul. And so the soul will continue longing to get rid of it. So you just have to come to that decision as the creator that I don't want to keep playing this out anymore. I decide now that it's not worth my investment anymore. I decide now I have no use for this. I decide now that that belief's futile. It cannot fulfill me. It cannot lead me where I want to go. And so I give it up. You're always the creator, no matter how much karma you're carrying, no matter how much belief has been built up in something, you're still the creator because look, you're looking at your creation, right? A lifelong belief 
in rejection is a lifelong creation of yours. So we talked about two weeks ago, training your frequency is that moment by moment requalifying of your thoughts from the old patterns of victim consciousness to the new pattern you're training of creator consciousness. And so the big hang up tends to be that you think you need to have some gigantic release. You think you need to feel this profound ecstatic love sweep over you, right? And you think your ego tells you if you don't have that experience, well, you didn't, it didn't really work. But haven't you built that belief in rejection very subtly, line by line, moment by moment? I mean, if we're honest, right? These beliefs that we're unworthy of love or that we're rejected or something. Yeah, there's, tra there's traumatic moments where we, we build a huge amount of it in one moment from a trauma, uh, a breakup, a rejection, and then that belief gets charged up with a ton of emotional energy. That does happen. But again, that's the exception, not the rule. Most of the time, there's just a lingering feeling of, of rejection, you know, and we're just allowing it to, to run through our consciousness. We're not taking responsibility for it. We're not requalifying it. We're not deciding what we want. And so you've built these beliefs year after year, moment by moment. And so that's going to be how you deconstruct it too. And if that sounds like a bummer, like, oh, I can't just do it in one foul swoop. I have to do it every day for weeks, months, years. If that sounds like a bummer, you still don't know you're the creator. <laughs> See, you still think you're a victim. No, you're the creator. You built that belief. And so you can unbuild it and build a new one, but you're only ever looking at your creations. So what is there to be bummed out about? It should only be ever an empowering realization that you're the creator. So if it feels like a bummer and for any reason, if it feels disempowering that you have to take responsibility now and you have to requalify your thoughts, then you don't know what it means to be the creator yet. So keep seeking, keep asking. Keep asking source to reveal to you your true power, your true divinity. Because if you do see your true power, if you do see your true divinity, you can rise to that level in a moment and speak from there and declare from there and create from there. But you've got to contact that part of you. And so this, my friends, is the power and the purpose of practicing the presence we talk about practicing the I am state, lifting your awareness to the presence of love, lifting your awareness to God's love, to the I am connect to yourself, connect to your source as often as possible because yourself, the I am the great I am reveals itself inside of you gradually. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a show or a stage performer, let's say, who has a, a big, long performance that they want to do for you to razzle dazzle you and impress you and give you an amazing, uh, experience at the show. And you just want them to come out and take a bow or something, right? And they're like, no, 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 no. I, I've been rehearsing this dance. I want to reveal the whole dance to you. And so you, you want to sit there and just watch the whole unfolding and be in it all the way. Right? <clears throat> That's like the attitude we need to have to step into the I am state. Stop feeling like you're far away from it. Stop feeling like you're earning it. Stop feeling like it's, it's a burden to practice it. <clears throat> be excited, be grateful, be childlike about your current awareness of I am. Just be grateful that you even know I am. Because guess what? If you know that you are, if you know that the I am consciousness itself is what you are, you're in the 0.0001% of this planet that has the luxury of knowing that. Everybody else is out there living like victims, living like separate prodigal sons. They don't know who they are. They don't know their creators. They genuinely believe they're victims. And that could be you, right? And it was you at one point. So can you just be grateful that you even know that you're the creator and be excited that you have that knowledge and be excited to put it to use? Oh, baby, that's the winning ticket. If you have that attitude, if you're excited to be the creator, if you look forward to requalifying egos, days are numbered because that momentum, it can't be slowed down. Once you find a true love of, I am 
You love being the I am. You love exercising your power as I am. You love taking responsibility as I am. You love taking responsibility as the creator to the point where, as I said a week ago or so, or two weeks ago, even if you get mugged in a back alley, the first thing you do is, how did I, the creator, attract that experience? And you're incapable of slipping down into victim consciousness anymore. You know, that frequency is no longer alive in you. You've fully transcended it. So that's the attitude I want to inspire you guys to have, and you as well, Lindsay, per your question, is yes, it's a responsibility. And yes, with great power comes great responsibility. But guess what else? With great power comes great fun and great enjoyment, great joy, great happiness. And so for you to know, part of you knowing who you are as I am is to love every component of what that means, right? In the same way that you could never be good at a sport. Let's say you're playing baseball and you're a pitcher. You could never become a good pitcher if it's a bummer for you to practice pitching, right? You have to love pitching. You have to be obsessed with it. You have to can't wait to get on the field and start practicing that curveball. And you just want to throw all day long, right? That's how people become great in any endeavor. So if you want to become a great creator, if you want to step into your full power, love it. Love that you get to take responsibility for your bullshit. Love that you get to take responsibility for your victim thoughts and requalify them again and again and again. Every time you do it, you should just feel that you're exercising your dominion as the creator. This thought has no power at all without me. This thought has no inherent power that I have not given it. I've given it all the meaning it has. And so I revoke all the meaning that I've given it. And truly, if you could do that with all your heart, 100% of your heart, you would revoke all your energy from it because you have that power. But that's kind of a lofty aspiration. It's, it's rare that we're able to access that full capacity of our power and do that. It has to be practiced like anything else. And so we practice it by gradually revoking our belief. And if you can lift your awareness to those heavenly realms of oneness, where you look down at victimhood and it makes no sense at all. It's bizarre, it's weird, it's futile, it doesn't make sense, it contradicts reality, and so it's just seen as useless. If you can lift yourself up there, if you can practice lifting yourself up there, and looking down from that perspective, everything is seen with clarity, everything is forgiven, You're, you hold no resentment towards those beliefs, and yet you see that they're futile. You see that they're not based in truth, and so you just don't want them. So in the practice of I am, it may take a while for you to get used to what that feels like to step into the full power of your godhood and then look at those egoic beliefs and say, oh, that's nothing. It's nothing. It's just a belief I gave energy to. It has no power over me that I don't give it. As you practice that more and more, you start exercising more and more of that power. And then you start seeing the results of that power where, um, like the example I gave of being nervous, speaking in public when I was in my late twenties, leading a meditation class, because it became my magnificent obsession to overcome that because I couldn't, it was almost like I couldn't live another day knowing that huge distortion was in me. It was like a, a fever inside of me. I had to get it out. Then I spent all of my time looking for that energy in myself. And when I saw it, I decided to requalify it and say, I do not need the approval of people. I don't believe that I used to believe it. And so I've built this belief that I need people's approval. The little pastor's kid in me from five years old or something started believing I needed people to like me so I could make my parents look good and be a good pastor's son. I definitely built that belief, but now it doesn't serve me anymore. And I don't want to believe it. And so I just kept hammering that thing and all the way to the meditation class in my car, I'm just requalifying, requalifying. I am here to be of service. I am here to be a conduit for the divine. I am not here to get approval. I am not here to be accepted by others. I'm already accepted. I'm already perfect as I am. I don't need anything from these people. I just want to bless them. I just want to serve them. And I would freaking charge myself up on that. 
And after about four weeks, I noticed that I was really looking forward to teaching. And I was up there with a lot more fire behind my words and a lot more authenticity shining through. And then it was like, oh, where did that thing go? Disappeared without a trace because I, the creator, revoked it. We always have that power. But have you practiced it? Do you believe it yet? Do you fully believe it yet? Or are you still on your way to believing it? Maybe part of you believes it, and that's a great starting place, but you notice that part of you still doesn't believe it. Great, keep requalifying that. Keep practicing being the creator that you are. And it's, it's only by being the self, you guys. It's only by being the self that you can know the self. There's no such thing as self-realization as a concept. There's no such thing as self-realization as a mental conclusion you arrive at. So it's almost like stop trying, you know, stop trying to understand that you're the I am. Just be the I am. Be the self that you are. Be the peace that you are. Be the love that you are. You are the presence of divine love at all times. You are the presence of peace at all times. But are you aware of it? Are you tuning into it? Are you qualifying it in your experience is the only question. So in a sense, spiritual progression, <clears throat> creator consciousness, it has to be practiced like anything else. Like the pitcher can't become a pitcher by reading about pitching, by watching YouTube videos of pitching tutorials. Those things can be helpful and prepare him to get on that mound and practice pitching. But how does the pitcher become a pitcher other than by doing it, right? Is to get up on that mound and practice throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing. And he has to love it to really get good at it. If he hates it, he'll never get good at it, right? That's, a, that's an inherent blockage to your learning is to not like something. So find the part of you that doesn't want to take responsibility and just wishes it could be a victim and wishes it didn't have to create its reality and rebuke that demon from your mind. It doesn't belong in you. It's inherently a contradiction to who you are. It's an obstacle to love. I don't want to be the creator. I don't like that I have to create. Until you look at that and deal with it, it will continue to block you from creator consciousness. You have to understand that I don't want to believe this. I don't want to have this belief. I don't want to hold these thoughts anymore. And when you really don't want to hold those thoughts anymore, you won't. If something is still showing up in your experience, it's because part of you still wants it there. And so the real inner work is to find that part of you that wants victimness or wants laziness or whatever is blocking you and to see it, put it into the light of awareness and choose, decide now you don't want that belief anymore. Just like we did with Francesco a minute ago, you have to do that with every aspect of self, darkness or light. You have to choose, right? No one else can step into your consciousness and choose for you. No one else can step into your body and speak for you. Only you can. Only you can save yourself. Only you can actualize yourself. Only you can create your reality. And so because we're multi-dimensional beings, we have to do a lot of inner searching throughout the day. We have to pay really close attention to our state of being. And when we feel the contraction, we feel stress, we feel littleness, we feel rejection. We have to go deeply into those things and say, what belief is here? What am I tolerating in my experience right now? What am I tolerating in my mind? Sometimes ego wants to make those things big and scary, right? We're afraid to look at them because we, th we don't realize it's our creation. Like literally like a drawing, like you drew a big demon on a piece of paper and then you look at it and you, ah, and you're afraid of it. But once you know that you drew it, you're, you are the artist of that drawing, then it can't scare you anymore. So you see the subtleties of I am, it goes that deep, it really does, down to the very subtlest perception of anything. You're, you're seeing a reflection always in how much you know yourself. And the true litmus and barometer for total self-knowledge is that there's an absence of fear in your experience because again, you cannot fear something that you know you have power over. You cannot fear something that you know is powerless in relation to you. 
you must have given it power in your mind before you feared it. So you got to find those parts of you that are in resistance to things. Yeah. And that's, that's the real requalifying is just see it, just put it into the light and then choose what you want instead. And every time it comes up, you do that again, but can you do it with a little more intensity? Can you do it with a little more passion? Can you be done with that belief? Can you be over it? Can you be, have had enough of it? That's the real attitude for healing because again, you'll see it or not as you wish. These parts will cling on to us for years sometimes, little tiny uh, pieces of resistance towards being the creator. Little fragments of victimhood will try to hang on to us. Kind of like those fish that swim on the whale's body, you know? They're trying to leech off of us and feed off of us. And until we look down and see where they are, they'll, they'll always be there, right? So, in conclusion, love this practice. Love that you're the I am. Love that you're the creator. And if you want to know it deeper, and if you want to access the power that is there, connect to it. Connect to God's love. Connect to the peace, the stillness of I am. I am is love. I am is love. And so if you just remember love, that's good enough. If you just remember that you are, that there is an eternal conscious principle looking through your eyes. And where did that come from? What, what source does that belong to? Where is that shining from? You know, this is basic self inquiry, right? Look to the sense of I am and then trace it back. Where is it shining from? Clearly it's shining. Yeah. Clearly you you are clearly you exist. Clearly you are conscious. So it's like there's rays of light beaming forth from you at all times. I am, I am awareness, existence, consciousness, always, every moment shining forth. Where's it coming from? And in that inquiry, if, if there's a childlike curiosity to it, you will find it's coming from the very source of all life itself. It has to, right? Where else could consciousness existence? Where else could these things come from? It is the light of source in you, which means you are that source. Just like a ray of light is the sun. It is no different than the sun. It's not two. It's not separate. It is the sun emanating forth. I am is God emanating forth through you. But do you know it? Do you love it? Do you connect to it? Do you feel that presence? Do you feel that shining throughout the day? The more times you can feel it, the better, because at a certain point, your conviction in that, in that power, that God power that rests in you will become so certain. You will feel like you are organizing the rotation of the planets. You will feel like you are moving the clouds across the sky and that the wind is blowing by your own will and that everything that happens was ordained by you. You feel yourself to be existence itself. And you're like, ah, oh, perfection is already here. The kingdom of heaven already present. What is there to do? What to improve? What needs to be changed? Just sit in it. Perfection is here as I am. All of that revelation, I promise you, is contained in your feeling that you are all of that revelation will be there and it has to be there in you organically to know it. You can hear my words. Now they can be very inspiring to you. And if they are inspiring to you, hold on to them. Keep looking into those words, right? Let them inspire you. But the inner standing of this has to happen from the heart. You have to look inside and really see that you are God that you are the I am itself and that the I am principle is prior to the body, prior to the person, the character, the stories, and that you really are that self prior to all conditioning. You are the innocence that came in through the baby's eyes when it was born. You are that purity. If it exists, it is existence. If it is conscious, it is consciousness. There can't be division, right? Consciousness can't be divided. 
There can't be something that isn't consciousness but has it. Well, there's a separation. There can't be something that is not existence, but has existence. Duality. That's a contradiction of truth, right? Existence can't be divided. So if you exist, you are that. You are existence. And doesn't existence already contain all the power of the universe? Isn't the universe what existence is doing? You will feel that. You will connect to that. And that indescribable happiness that comes with knowing that all things are already happening according to your will. So if a challenging moment happens, you feel as if you created it genuinely. You feel as if you brought it to yourself to show you a mirror of darkness in you, of a shadow. You don't drop into victim consciousness for a second. You go, ah, thank you, I am, for bringing me that tough, challenging moment just now, which showed that there's a little bit of pride in me still. I'm so glad to see it because now I can requalify it. That's the attitude, right? The childlike, happy attitude is the most cutting edge one because it's the hardest one to maintain. It's the hardest one to achieve and to maintain, to have a truly happy attitude, full acceptance towards everything that happens, pain or pleasure. But that is the attitude of the I am. That is the attitude of God. It just sees all things as a, a teaching opportunity, a learning opportunity. And you are both the teacher and the learner from the I am state. So I guess I'm getting a little esoteric there. Um, sometimes these things just need to be experienced for yourself. Um, but I hope that that gives you some more insight, Lindsay, into the right attitude to approach these practices from. I, I want to be careful that I'm not sort of like making you guys feel as if this is some fancy technique that you can just apply and get results. It is a living realization that has to be born from your heart that you, in a moment of insight, realize, I am. It's true. And if I am, then I'm creating my reality in every moment. And so, oh my gosh, I've been giving my attention to all these horrible ideas. I've been giving my belief in lack and victimhood and so now there's just this great sense of ownership over your state of being that you're like, okay, time to create my reality for real. Time to consciously create my reality. That, that empowerment, that love to do this, that's the real I am state. When you get there, you're already in the I am state. You may have a lot of energy to requalify, but that's not what dictates if you're in the I am. It's the state of being that is the I am. The I am doesn't need to be improved, right? The I am isn't perfecting itself slowly over time. The, the person's getting perfected, right? The person's the vehicle for I am. The person's the learning device for I am. So when we know who we are in relationship to the person, I'm not the body, I'm not the character. It's just a temporary vehicle I'm using. It's a temporary mirror I'm using to know myself. Then whatever's there in the person is of no consequence to you. You don't define yourself by it any longer. You don't identify with it anymore. You just say, all right, this is here for my learning and for my growth. I, I'm seeing a reflection of my past beliefs that if I want to know myself, I need to change and requalify. But I'm already that. I'm just here to experience it, explore it, play in it, create it, manifest it. I mean, that's the real beauty and adventure of life, isn't it? To live from the finished kingdom and yet create the kingdom in real time. Both are happening, yeah? Perfection's already at hand, but God only manifests through individuality. God is already manifest in you as you, and God wants to express himself. God wants to express its glory in the universe. In fact, this is why Jesus says to the uh, I don't know if it's his disciples or some bystanders, but <clears throat> he heals the man with palsy. And his disciples say, Lord, uh, oh no, the blind man. They say, Lord, who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it his parents or was it his sin? And Jesus says something really amazing. Jesus says he is not blind because his parents sinned or because he sinned. He is blind so that the glory of God may be revealed in him. And there's something important there, which is that all of creation, if we have to boil it down to words, 
all of creation exists, really, for the glory of God to be demonstrated. <laughs> Isn't that wild? All the things you go through, all the challenges, all the ups and downs, they exist only so that God may be glorified in you. Because guess what? When you glorify God, when you demonstrate love, when you demonstrate I am, it is the most holy and completely satisfying feeling you can ever have. It's what the soul has always craved. It's what the ego thinks it was craving all along, yeah? In searching for pleasure in the world and over and over again, sex, drugs, rock and roll, and it can't get fulfilled, it can't get fulfilled. Well, damn it, what is it I really want? To glorify God. That's God's will, to be glorified, to be manifested, and because you are God, you are one with God, that's your will too. Meaning there is no greater happiness available in this experience than demonstrating the kingdom. It, it's, it's beyond satisfying. It's like something else. We need a different word for it. It's like coming home or something. It's, it's more than just satisfying. It's like all of your soul cries out, yes, this is why I exist. And to demonstrate God's glory, is to demonstrate your glory. You are that. You're not demonstrating somebody else's glory. But every moment is contained with infinite potential. Infinite magic is waiting to be manifested, right? Infinite glory is available at every moment to be manifested. A realized being is somebody who is so deeply tuned in to the field around them, to the present moment, and sensitive in their heart to what God wants to do. And they're asking, they're asking God, use me, show me what you want me to do right now. Show me where I'm to be of service right now. Show me how you want to be manifested through me now. And if you're asking that, you will receive that. The only problem is we have not because we ask not, right? 